420 MSP, Harry here, and I am with an industry leader and a special guest, George Sadler, the president of Platinum. So George, quickly uh, introduce yourself and uh, what's your story? And then I have a couple specific questions to talk about looking forward to the new year and the new decade in this uh, vertical. Absolutely, Harry. Um, first of all, thanks for taking the time with me on this. I appreciate it. Um, named George Sadler, actually the president um, of Platinum Vape. My partner is my son, Cody Sadler. Um, back history, real quick one. Um, obviously some stuff to follow up on another interview, but uh, came from the flooring industry into the uh, the uh, uh, drive through coffee and then uh, father's 38 to 40 year old uh, electrical business winding down, uh, came in and helped him on that end of it. and. Because of my son, Cody, we ended up uh, on this path, which is cannabis. And we started out as cultivators and and into uh, from cultivators to brick and mortar to delivery to uh, where we're at now in extraction and, and um, manufacturing. Well, and your success is well deserved. You paid your dues, sir. We will talk about that another time. You're a $70 million company. Um, what What states are you primarily in? and uh, then then we'll get to the good stuff so right now we are in michigan california based out of california started in california michigan and um oklahoma oklahoma yeah uh, you and, know and just on for, another note so we we uh we will be going to new york miami and um and nevada we're launching in nevada next month all right well continued success and you said Oklahoma. Um, George, part of my role is to be an industry analyst, and Oklahoma is extremely interesting with the per capita cardholders <laughs> in medical. Um, oh, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and you wouldn't normally think that way, but um, George, uh, we reached out to you because you have put together some thoughts. Again, new decade, new year, uh, quite frankly, new industry. So I want to, I want, I want to ask you a couple questions. You know, under under the uh, under the guise of uh, integrity uh, leads to opportunity. Um, you made a comment about a strong reputation can catch the eye of industry powerhouses, delivering opportunities of growth and fortune that can take a company to the next level. So let's double click into that. What what what's going on there? So I mean, I think when when you talk about the integrity, that I mean, it's it's it can be pretty broad and i think to narrow it down is is just to say integrity and this industry which um has been faulted considerably um the integrity side of cannabis it went from no integrity <coughs> to a lot of integrity to kind of back to no integrity and if i if i really explain that the way that i see it and once again this is my view um I, I think we've waited for uh big money to be able to 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 be inside cannabis and to have kind of spread your wings and so before that you did have the black market you had people that uh less desirable people in in the industry you know on a yeah. much larger scale <laughs> there's, no, there's no integrity when you're when you're selling weed out of the back of a uh, of a truck i mean uh, we then went to that point where legalization came into play and then you see a lot of integrity from people that really yep. mean you understand and to have the medicinal values uh, exposed and and really understanding that that the money wasn't the base of what was going on then you come into where we're at now today with big cannabis i call it big cannabis because the money that's involved in this industry is unbelievable um, and I'm not talking on our level. We've been very successful um, from where we're at, which we can go into. Um, I'm talking about the groups that are in this industry and the unfortunate side of investors into cannabis. And if anybody has stock in cannabis and has had stock in cannabis, you will understand what I mean on that level because it is probably the worst play you could ever have at this time. Yeah. Um, I think it's it's just been too early there's not enough room for the big big cannabis and um and and you know it, it, it's a tough play because people are losing i'm gonna say hundreds if not 
billions of dollars right now in this industry because it's not ready. It's not ready for, you know, these these companies to go that that direction. Um, yeah. Yeah, George. What if you don't mind? What what I would tell you? I did a piece recently up on 420 MSP where we um, wove in from the technology industry. It's called the Gartner hype curve and. The, the simple example of the hype curve is the dot-com boom, right? We had silly money in the late 90s, and then just a few years later, you had the trough of disillusionment, and you could pick up these companies um, for a penny on the dollar. Yeah. And, and, and and we are following the Gartner hype curve, my friend. <laughs> you know, you're, you're, you're right, and I can't remember the movie. I just got back... Uh, um, I did a, a, a couple week vacation and I was coming back on the plane and I was watching a movie and it was, it was pretty crazy. And, and if I could remember it and, and I will, and you can, you can place that in there, but it was exactly that. And it was, it was a company and I keep, for some reason, keep going to rabbit, but um, it was a company that was very successful in the beginning. And they were the first company to ever get outside funding. And it was from Sony for $86 million, and what they were developing was the cell phone, the smartphone, these things that, and it just wasn't ready, and then they yeah. fell off. Um, the, the unbelievable thing was is the amount of people that from that company went into Apple and all these other companies that are now hugely successful, and all those people say, and even the, the co-founders and the founders said, it was just too early. The, the, it wasn't accepted at that time. Three years later, made all the difference. And I think, the, honestly, I think, Harry, I think that's where we're at is just you hit it. And it's funny that it triggered that that movie that I watched. But um, it it's too early. And until we get 30. And that's before, okay. That, that's okay. But manage your expectations. <laughs> exactly. exactly. And I think. You know, I mean, segue into where we're at and why we're who we are. Um, this company is, um, it's Cody and myself. We don't have, we have and never have taken any outside investments. We have built this company from six lights and six plants and invested everything back into this company and continue to do so. We don't live yeah. lavish lifestyles. We, uh, we're pretty pretty basic. We're actually next door neighbors in a, in a small uh, five house subdivision on a cul-de-sac and houses that are, you know, probably not what anybody would ever think a $70 million company would be living in. Um, smaller than most, we take uh, basic salaries out of the company and we invest everything back into it. Um, and I think that's, you know, for us, that's been the backbone of why and who uh, we are as a company. And it's tough. I, I'm telling you, I don't know to grow a company as we are um, is, is is tough to do it with, you know, outside funding. Yeah, it makes it easier. But now what you have is you have these companies that people want returns. And two years later, after all these investments and, people, you know, companies getting two, three hundred million dollars infused. Yeah. Um, what you see and and listen i mean this is just my perspective once again so people people will probably get angry and not agree but i think as we go along we'll see it's pretty close i believe is that um you can't have uh you know five five to eight people running a company with salaries all over three four hundred thousand a year driving bentley's living in mansions um this isn't the time for that and and yes some companies have been bought and for for numbers that I have no idea how they come up with, but um, a lot companies that do a lot less than us purchase for you know hundreds of millions of dollars. We've had offers, and um, and we've had good offers, but it's just it, this is what we do. We employ now uh, between California and um, and Michigan and Oklahoma, probably I think we're about 160, 170 employees. Um, we love, we love that side of it. Don't get me wrong. It's a huge weight. And, and, um, but to know that this industry is allowing us to provide, um, a healthcare benefits, um, for all of our employees, uh, that's, that's really stable. This industry, I mean, 
five years ago to say that you'd be supplying or providing healthcare, you'd be, they think you were crazy. Um, so there's a lot of benefits to that. And then uh, I just think it's too soon for big cannabis and maybe we are a $70 million a year company. Um, that is built on, not on big cannabis. It's it, it you know, I, I don't know how we qualify on, on that end of it, but, um, it's still really tough. Yeah. The margins are no longer there. Well, I think, you know, the, the cornerstone of all this, and, and we feel the same the way I grew SMB Nation, but it's uh, uh, integrity, um, ethics, uh, you know, and, and it stands the test of time. Hey, next <clears throat> next observation that you shared with me, um, and, and we've kind of touched on it, but you, you talked about from local to national. So uh, you, you, you shared that cannabis brands are gearing up for federal legalization. Yes. positioning themselves as national brands before others hop on the bandwagon. Cody, let me frame it up a little bit differently. We've in some ways kind of talked about this with the sort of the, the uh, Gartner hype curve um, headed to a trough of disillusionment and then it stabilizes. Um, what I'm hearing from you is this is a darn good time to do a land grab and get mind share, right? If, if you can weather, weather the volatility you could do very well in just a few years. Is that is that kind of what you were getting at from local to national? Yeah, I think I think if, if that's how you describe it, which I mean is probably true to what's going on if you really look at it. Yeah, I think um, I think 2020 is going to be we're calling it the filter, and I yeah. think what you're going to see is um, and I don't want to say it the wrong way, but I sat in a meeting with Adam Bierman with MedMen, and um, which you know probably is is a tough place to be as well yeah. but um you know i i give him a lot of credit where other people don't and i think one thing that he had said that really set in with us was nobody's a brand right now just because you're in california and you're one of the you know top 10 you know and you're selling and even the top one whatever you want to call it you're not a brand until you're national until you are known as a pepsi or coke um you're just you're not a brand and you, yeah you're doing a great job but you have to be national and that's the direction that that's the direction that i think is it is it, the industry's trying to go but it's too early to do it in the ways that it's being done on our level um we're simplifying everything um once again we don't have any outside funding so we're doing this solely on the back of 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 us um and and I think organically growing our company naturally yeah. through national is the direction right now that we have to go. Um, yeah, that's how I grew SMB Nation. Never took you outside money. So and, uh, you know that, you know that feeling. And, um, and I think we sleep really well at night knowing that I don't have that type of debt out there. We don't owe anybody money um and we've carried that through uh, i i think for us to grow national you know to to be national um it has to be a slow pace and we can't we can't take on you know five six states at a time uh so we're just we're just doing what we do and kind of picking up where we can um and you know once again that that that's our direction i don't believe that big cannabis has a has a moment yet i think right yeah. now like you said i think now is the time to really start to figure out where your place is going to be and strategically play it out because the next, you know, this year is going to be filtering. It's going to literally be who can hang on. We're in a, we're in a crisis. I don't want to say crisis, but we're, we're at that curve, that bottom curve right now to, yeah, to yeah. find out. And you can see it, the layoffs in this industry, the company's going out of business. I'm not going to name any names, but anybody that's looking at this industry, there's some big, big companies that are going out of business. Yeah. And just like just like anybody else, even on our level, we are still in the same in the same boat as everybody else, where we are uh, strategically playing out each location where we're at as far as employees, as far as you know, our output on everything. Um, there's just it's a very unstable situation right now. 
And that's how fortunes are made. Um, hey, final point, and, and you actually touched on it. Uh, you you had shared uh, some insights with me about define and conquer. Um, you said it's imperative companies define uh, who they want to be before going to market. Yep. Possibility of full legalizations. Companies need to know uh, who they are before entering the national landscape. And again, let me let me put a little slight twist on that, um, and and then get your thoughts. Is that uh, I've grown my company organically. I've grown it slowly over the the years, and um, the Microsoft technology wave and others. And, and maybe at times I grew a little too slow. But um, I'll, I'll I'll tell you this: that here here was a piece I did uh, some time ago on 420 MSP. Thank goodness for the slow rollout of legalization for adult use in particular by states because um george it gives us exactly the time we need to to slow grow and you, you build a business that that is, that is the best way you could put it and i i, I should have thought of that that's yeah. my, i'm stealing that uh, from you, you. Go, go ahead and trademark it it's cool <laughs> no you get it i mean that that you're 100 correct it, it uh, this is, the, the world now is so fast, and we our expectations are so big, and the timelines. Everybody, this they have this feeling that they're like there's. I've been saying it for for the last three years. People have been, oh, I'm too late into the industry. I'm like, no, you're too early in the industry. Yeah. The industry has it hasn't even started yet, and I and I firmly believe that. I, I firmly believe that that. People starting in cannabis now are going to be further ahead than a lot of us have been and will be in the next five to 10 years. I think, yeah. as you've said, the dot com time, it, there, nobody sees the fall of dot com before it became dot com. Nobody recognized that because they only see the big bubble and everybody that came out of that. They don't see how many people failed. Not because yeah. they were poor business people, not because they didn't have a good business model. It's because it was too soon. It was too early. The big dot com people came after the real dot com started. If that makes sense, and you said it, you said it right. No. Yeah, no, it does. I, I, uh, George, I wrote a bunch of books back in the day, Windows Secrets and so on. And one of my editors, she worked by day at a a firm in downtown Seattle called Adam Films. So this is 1998-99. She's a rock and roller. Adam Films is gone. And you know what came out of the trough of disillusionment and the maturity uh, upward, uh, uh, slope, upward sloping to the right uh, line was uh, Netflix. I mean, there, there's your answer. <laughs> there you go. And if you, and if you look at it, and I'll send you, and I'll, I'll let you know the movie, as I remember, you probably know, because okay. you know, you're in that timeline, but it's um, the guy that that uh, that created eBay. He was with this company, and and he, you know, they show this. It's a documentary, and they show they show him talking to the the owner of of this company, and they're like, yeah, you know, that's a crazy idea. Well, I think he sold that for 111 billion dollars or whatever the heck it was back at the time. You know, what I mean, all these guys and the and the, the guys that came out and ended up into Apple. Um, there, there's just a whole lot of, that's the thing is that you're going to find this to be true as well, that you're going to see the same spread. I truly believe that we're just now, finally, we're just now getting started in cannabis. Well, and I'm going to make that the final word and I'm going to emphasize it in my blog is that if, if you don't mind, but what I heard is now's the time to get started. And 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 you're not late so if you don't mind i'm i'm gonna extract that Absolutely. out of our interview yeah and uh george we're gonna get you back real soon to double click down into the story of your company because my audience of managed services providers are also business owners providing technology consulting services so um a company story is always well it's an evergreen it's always welcome sir uh i know you're busy thanks for your time have a great day Thank you, you too.